Uh, we'll be talking about eating your vegetables with Linda McCartney. She'll explain, I guess, when Good Morning America <laughs> continues. I know that song. She's not the kind of person people think she is. That's the way rock superstar Paul McCartney described our next guest. And he ought to know he's married to her. Linda McCartney is the mother of Paul's three children. She's a photographer. She's a musician. She's a vegetarian turned cookbook author. Linda McCartney's home cooking is full of her own vegetarian recipes, some of which she has brought with her here today. It's nice to have you with us. When did the whole vegetarian thing start? How long ago did you switch over? For me, it was about 20 years ago. Really? Yeah. And, how, and why and how so? Well, I was always an animal lover, like you, a horse yeah. mad, and I liked eating meat as well. I never associated that a rib or a breast or a thigh was an animal's body, so I ate meat happily. And then we were on our farm in Scotland, eating leg of lamb, and we looked out the window at our baby sheep and we associated <laughs> Didn't the, like the connection. <laughs> no, and we thought, that's it. And the same thing with chicken, we were behind a big truck of lots of little lovely chickens and it turned into a chicken processing plant and we thought like that they're going to be killed so so it's not just not eating meat it's not eating poultry and not eating fish too no. because some vegetarians still eat fish well they're not vegetarians they're not completely vegetarian so what are the parameters then because you have to then put mm. back into your diet of course a lot of protein well the thing is the reason i don't eat fish is because they have feelings too <laughs> you know, i don't eat anything with a face or a heart so. Now, as I understand it, I think I read this in the paper, that backstage, even on your concert tours, you have all vegetarian food. How does it go over with all the crew? It went, well, it took me a long time to find a cook who knew what I was talking about, because all I'm saying is instead of eating flesh, you get something called textured vegetable protein, which has more protein. I mean, it's what the animal you're eating ate before you ate him. Yeah, that's hard to find in this country, but there are all it's, kinds of things. There's mm, soy products. There are a number of different absolutely. things you can use in these products. And all, how about the kids? Are the kids, the whole family vegetarian? Yes, yeah. Is it hard on them not being able to do hot dogs or fish and chips no, and stuff? No, because you get vegetarian hot dogs, which, I mean, a hot dog is, what is it, feet and I won't tell you what's in a Aww. hot dog, but <laughs> they taste the same without meat, you know. I've heard that list before. Yes. Yeah, interesting things here. This is a beet soup, right? Mm -hmm. Borscht, they call it. And I don't eat, use, use um, meat stock. I use vegetable stock. Vegetable stock. And can I just dip in here and then you can tell us. What are we looking at back there? What's in the tomatoes? There, I just cottage what cheese and basil and chives. And, and it's all very simple cooking. Mm. Beet soup's good, by the way. And this is, let's that's, see if I can say That's the it. one. Beef bourguignon? Well, beefless bourguignon. Beefless bourguignon in this case. And this, interestingly, is called Heather's lemon pudding cake. Mm. Heather's your oldest daughter, right? Yes. And how old is she now? 27. Did she make this recipe herself, or is this something you always made no, for her? She, no, she, she uh, made it up. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. You have, what, four children, three of them with Paul. How old are they? They range from 13 to... 27. 13 to 27. Mm -hmm. All right. We've got to taste Heather's little invention here. <laughs> this is the best part of the show, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mm. say eating. That's that, delicious. You should have tried that first, because that's the, the essence. Yeah, and it tastes, and it chews like meat, and you wouldn't know the difference. All right, I like something else about this book because she says in the introduction that we should get our husbands involved in cooking. In fact, you say that we should arrange it so that they, at, once a day or at least once a week, should have the husband totally responsible, solely responsible. Does Paul cook? He loves to cook. I find a lot of men love to cook. It's a creative outlet and touching food, and I, I find it um, fun for men. They love it, sort of like art. Get all, the whole family into it, too. Yeah, I think uh, we should get more family-orientated anyway. How is it for your children growing up with such famous, famous parents? I think, all right. We We're very loving normal. parents, and mm -hmm. you live in the country. We live in the country. We, I'm not um, involved with celebrities or living a very showy life. I have a sort of basic attitude anyway. Yeah. Well, you guys have made it that way for yourselves, I think. That's the kind mm -hmm. of life you wanted for your family, right? Absolutely. I said in the introduction that, that I quoted Paula saying you're one of the most misunderstood people. What do you think is the biggest misconception that people have about you? Well, I think when I married Paul, they said I was cold and pushy. And the thing is, I'm a very, very warm person. You think maybe that's because you stole away the guy that everybody loved? <laughs> Actually, I think it's because I look a bit that way. Really, I think I look a bit cold, but I'm not. I'm very warm. I mean, I love animals, and I don't eat them, so that's warm, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> and I, I got to see you guys when you were performing here on the tour. Are you going to do another tour? Yeah. Yeah, next year? Yeah, I think make another album and get out there again. It was good fun. 
I remember the first time that you went up on stage. I remember all the articles. And, and some unkind things. I think people were oh, real. Yeah. They felt like you pushed your way in there. You think that's part of this whole syndrome? Though? Absolutely. I mean, I didn't want to do it. It was Paul pushed me in there. I'll gladly really? stay at home and ride my horse. And yeah, you seem like yeah. the shy type to me. So I am. Basically. Still today, I'll bet, right? Absolutely. I haven't changed a bit. Is it tough to go out there on stage still today? I think less than it used to be. Because once you know what you're playing, and it, we have a good band, and it, it was fun, and the audiences were fantastic. Well, you had another band, though. I mean, besides mm. playing with Paul and the Stripes, what was it? Oh, Susie and the Red Sus Stripes. Yeah. But again, I thought, I, you know, I'm doing my vegetarian stuff. I have a lot of animals. I have the kids. I have photography. I just really didn't want to get out there and you know, be a pop star. But up you, front. You know, I'm yeah. in the band and that's all right, but... I'll go out there but leave me on the back row. Exactly. <laughs> you go out there and do all that and I'll sit here and go, mm -hmm, be very quiet. Well, listen, it was enjoyable reading the book. Nice to be Thanks. able to meet you. Good. Nice meeting you. Thank you, Linda. We'll I'll be back in just a moment. Good Morning America continues. And in our next half hour, the latest in home furnishings.